Well, <laughs> Fast Lane is in the books, guys. And yeah, at this time, I probably haven't put my predictions up, but I am anyway because I've already done the video. It's just I've had a tough time putting it up, but it's what it is. I'm going to say this about this pay-per-view. This pay-per-view was fun. Even though it had zero to minimal build, or I'm going to reverse that, minimal to zero build, <laughs> it still was a pretty fun pay-per-view to watch. Now, there were some highlights of the night, and then there also were uh, highlights of that night, and then there's also a lot, well... I'm going to say it's probably one bad match on the card. A lot of people were talking about how, Shins how Shinsuke Nakamura versus Rusev was one of the worst matches of the night. Honestly, I liked it. I enjoyed it. And I really thought it was a decent match. And even though people said they played a little bit, a little bit safe, I still thought it was a pretty decent match. And it made Shinsuke look good, and it didn't make Rusev look like a chump. So in my opinion, I think that match was pretty good. Now, the match of the night wasn't the match that I actually thought it would be. I thought the match of the night would actually be the tag team match with the Usos versus the New Day. But it wasn't because it was kind of cut short because of the Bludgeon Brothers. Now, that was the first moment I'm going to pretty much talk about of the night. There were at least, well, there was one more. One more moment of the night. But honestly, with that... The Bludgeon Brothers, in my opinion, were not all that threatening. They were just, they were just too big. I, I, I hate to say it like this because it's going to sound not great, so I'm not going to say it like that. But they were just two big white guys with a hammer. Yeah, I went ahead and said it. I'm sorry. They were just two big white dudes with a hammer or two big ex, um, ex white family members with a hammer. That's it. They weren't that intimidating. With this... Maybe it kind of makes them look like they are, but I don't really cause I don't really see them as a threat because they haven't been built that way. They've only been fed jobber chow. That's pretty much it. If I see like for example, Ryback, I didn't take Ryback that seriously for a very long time because he was fed jobber chow for a long time. But then when he started um literally devouring the mid card and then going further up, you started taking him seriously. With the Bludgeon Brothers, they were fed Jabra Chow for a very long time. Now they ended up taking out one of the two best tag teams in their division. They're starting to look serious now, but I'm still not thinking that they're a complete threat until they have a decent push on SmackDown. And SmackDown streak has not been great so far, so I'm hoping they don't mess it up. But they're starting to become a credi credible threat after what they did to Zay. Even though I'm going to be real with you, my cousins used to do that. <laughs> but then I could be absolutely wrong if there is something wrong with him. So I take that all back. Even though my cousins know how to literally play like they are hurt, even though they're not. And we end up finding out later they're not. <laughs> but in his case, he might be. So it's kind of difficult to say. But it was a good match, even though it got cut short in my opinion. But... I will say the biggest surprise of the match definitely was Charlotte versus Ruby Riot. Um, honestly, Ruby Riot, that was one of the best matches in her career. And even though the Riot Squad, um, Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan came out, even though they came out, they didn't really interfere that much. And honestly, and also you had Becky Lynch and Naomi came out to kind of even up the odds. Even if that was the case, it got thrown out, but it was still a good match with or without them. And they didn't take anything away from Ruby. Like, she fought as hard as she could fight. I mean, there were a few mishaps, a few missteps, but it wasn't that bad. It actually was a really great match, fun match to watch. But the second shocker that I'm going to talk about is Asuka. We finally know exactly who she's facing. Finally, she is facing Charlotte at WrestleMania for the SmackDown belt, which means she can't, she possibly um, is going to switch brands. Which my overall theory is this. Everybody thought that for Carmella, we thought that for Carmella's match she had with, uh, with um, Natalia and Becky Lynch and Naomi, well, versus all of them, whatever. <laughs> but we thought she was going to cash in, but she didn't. Something's telling me that she's not going to cash in with Charlotte. She's going to cash in with Alexa Bliss. There could be a chance that she's going to po probably pull a Seth Rollins to where they're both like flat out, knocked out, tired in the middle of the ring. And here comes Carmella cashing in her money in the bank to take the belt away from Alexa Bliss. I would not be shocked if she pulls that 
with that pulls herself Rollins and takes the belt from both of them. Because let's be real, Carmella cannot beat Nia. A hundred percent can't beat Nia. She could possibly, maybe in a small fraction of a way, beat Alexa Bliss. But either or, since she's pretty much kind of a cowardly heel ish calculating mixed between calculating cowardly heel. I really do predict that she's going to pull a Seth Rollins. I could be wrong, but it makes sense if she does that. So we may not see her cash into WrestleMania, and she's going to take the belt away from Alexa Bliss and Nia. I see that 100%. I really do. I could be wrong, but I'm seeing that. But anyway, let's move on. Honestly, the worst match of the night, in my humble opinion, definitely was Randy Orton versus Bobby Roode. That match was slow. It was slow. It picked up and then it got slow again. I was falling asleep. It was boring. Like, I really did 100% try to enjoy that match, but it was boring. And honestly, the fact that they kind of changed the storyline and the overall um, catalyst of what started the stupid feud and making it to the fact that Randy Orton wanted to be a Grand Slammer, sure, whatever. Yeah, we're idiots. The thing is, it all started because of a dumb countdown, and then they kind of retconned that and made it into the fact that Randy Orton wanted to be a Grand Slammer. Do you really think Randy cares about that belt? In my opinion, no. <laughs> but like I said, well, not really like I said because I haven't put the video up yet, but I've said this before in other videos. You will not be able to get Randy Orton to put anybody over unless you pay him. They didn't pay him enough, and Randy Orton took the belt from Bobby Roode. And now, somehow, Jinder Mahal is going to shove himself into the mix and try to take the belt from Randy. I'm so tired of Jinder. I really am. I loved Jinder when he first came out. I loved the fact it was something new. But he's boring. There's nothing to him as a heel. He's boring. The only thing they like about him is the fact that he's Indian descent. That's it. He's Canadian, but he's Indian descent. They like that, I guess, just to cash in for his heritage. But despite all that, that was a very boring match. It's a shame that it happened with Bobby Roode, but it's also a good thing. Third shocker of the night, Bobby Roode went ill. Something I've been waiting for for a while because his character is more of a heel character than a babyface character. So it's about freaking time. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. It's not really a bad thing. But honestly, I'm going to go on to the main event of the night because that happened to be the main event of the night. It felt like the main event. There was like a whole hodgepodge of storylines kind of mixed up into one, but it all worked. It didn't seem like a complete mess as I thought it would be. It was a car crash. I'm not going to lie, but it was a beautiful car crash. And I know that's kind of morbid, but that's how it was. AJ Styles was pretty much half gone for most of the time, but he would come back out of surprise. You had the whole conflict between uh, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens, and Shane McMahon came out to make the conflict even more intense. Then you had uh, John Cena, who really wants to go to WrestleMania and have that moment. And then you had Barry Corbin and Dolph Ziggler that's trying to prove themselves and make something of themselves. It was so many storylines rolled up into one, but it worked so well. It was it worked really well and it was fun to watch. And also John Cena's expression on his face when he did not win and he pushed the camera away. It was like a child that lost a game and he didn't want to deal with you. So he's like, uh, oh. I thought that was really adorable and I thought that perfect that, that felt perfect. Because John Cena can sell a loss. He knows how to do that. And we actually are going to see AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania 34. I'm excited about seeing that. And we also got some confirmed matches. Two so far. We probably have a few more, but I can't remember the rest. But I do know we have two that's set in stone. We have Charlotte versus Asuka. And we also have Shinsuke Nakamura <laughs> Shinsuke Nakamura versus AJ Styles. Those are the two matches we have set from SmackDown going on to WrestleMania. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. I really am. As my overall thoughts for this pay-per-view, this pay-per-view could have been a throwaway, but they did what they could with it. They took, like, leftovers and made it into a gourmet meal. Seriously, it was so much fun to watch. I enjoyed myself, except for maybe Randy Orton versus Bobby Roode. But the match itself, the entire pay-per-view itself was still fun to watch. I can even say for Becky Lynch, 
Yeah, for Becky Lynch and Naomi versus Carmella and Natalia. Yeah, it seemed like there was a botch towards the end there because it seemed like Naomi pretty much forgot to go in to stop them. But despite all that, I still like this pay-per-view and I still think it's a must-watch for anybody that didn't see it. Go back and watch it. It actually is fun to watch. And I'm looking forward to see what they're going to do with SmackDown moving on ahead. And as for this recording, it is Tuesday, so SmackDown is coming on tonight. Actually, no, it is Monday, and <laughs> Monday Night Raw is coming on tonight. But despite all that, guys, I really did enjoy this pay-per-view, and I would love to hear your thoughts. So leave in the comments below and let me know how you feel about it. And I am going to put my predictions video up because, hey, I don't mind knowing that I'm wrong. And I'm probably wrong about half of my predictions, so I want you guys to see if I am or not. But other than that, y'all, I will see you later. Peace out.